Hey everyone, and welcome to Art Starts Explores. This is week three, and we're continuing to explore contrast. The voice you hear is Kay Slater, and I am excited to continue exploring contrast with you. This is a second video that I've done for week three. I started out by looking at uh, different, uh, different shades of gray, and you can check out that video in our video archive on Facebook, YouTube, or artstarts.com slash explorers dash online. For this workshop, we're going to start exploring um, contrast. We're going to continue uh, exploring contrast uh, with gray. But this time what we're going to do is we're going to do something called um, still life. And what we're going to do is we're going to take objects. And that's going to be our example. That's what we're going to try and draw. But to challenge ourselves further, we're only going to use gray or graphite, and in this case, uh, a pencil. So before we get started, if you can grab some paper, and the paper doesn't have to be fancy um, or clean, it can have writing on the other side of it, it can be ripped, uh, scrap paper from the recycling bin is great. Do you have a pencil? And just any kind of pencil, it doesn't have to have a good eraser at the end. Uh, you're probably going to want it to be fairly sharp but just an HB pencil. If you've ever gotten a drawing kit, you might have some fancy pencils um, that will have different numbers and letters on them. We'll talk a little bit about that today, but mostly we're just exploring. So this is more when you are sketching um, and, uh, and, you've, got, and, you've, and you, you've, got a, you've got something in mind. For this one, because it's, it's explores, we don't really have anything in particular that, that uh, we're trying to make. We're not trying to finish or make a finished drawing. It's really whatever we learn while we're trying and exploring. Um, and so just picking one pencil and seeing what you can do with it is what I recommend. But if you have some fancy pencils, go for it. Also in those kind of fancy um, pencil kits, sometimes you'll have um, really nice erasers. I like just the plain old plastic erasers that you can get. They're usually like a buck at an art store. Um, I like them because you can cut them up and make them into smaller pieces. They clean really well. They don't really gum up your page. Um, you can also find these more natural gum erasers, which are also uh, really good. But any kind of eraser that you have is just fine. It's just great for what we're going to be exploring this week. Okay, so I, did, I felt a little nostalgic because this is our nostalgic as in uh, thinking about things from the past and thinking fondly about things from the past because this is our final explores of 2020. And so I got out, so I, I got out our, uh, the little mini gallery and set that up. And so it's got the white walls around my drawing space today. Um, but I also pulled out this little mini cardboard TV that I've used in other workshops before. And the reason I got this out was because um, I'm going to be setting up, I'm going to be using the top of our little mini TV here to set up a couple of items that we can use to draw. But um, if you have a, a TV or a, um, an ottoman or even the couch, uh, a table, anything is great. Any surface that you can have a flat space to put uh, various objects on top will work. You don't have to have a fancy pedestal. You don't have to have um, an art table or an art easel. Anything that you have, wherever you're making, you just need a surface. I mean, you could even use it, the floor if you wanted um, to try different angles. If that's all you've got, then, that, then that's great. One of the other things that I found was um, I had this, this cloth, um, this art cloth, and I'm going to cover it here. But I just wanted to show you that I was using, <laughs> I was using a TV, the TV from one of our previous sessions. And I'm going to cover it with this white cloth. And that's what I'm going to put all the objects on. And the reason that I'm going to do that is because I want there to be pretty good contrast between the objects that I'm going to put on this space um, and, and, you know, the background. So the background in this mini gallery is white walls. And then I've got this white uh, base and then I'll be able to put things on top of. And it'll be easier to see because of the contrast between the colors. Okay, I'm going to move some of these things over just so I've got a little bit more room to work. Continue working in gray, pull my pencils over here, grab a piece of paper. 
All right, so let's start by setting up our still life. And so what I want us to do is to go around wherever we're making today, whether that's um, a home or your classroom or you're over at a friend's house or you're staying with some grandparents or you're with um, a foster family, wherever you are is great. If you have permission to go looking for some objects, go and find some things that you think would be interesting to draw. If you don't want to head off and find your own right now, you can just, you can follow along and you can watch what I have, or you can draw what you see on the screen and what, I, what I'm putting together. Um, there is no right thing for you to find. Just try, try whatever you can find and, and set it up. So what I did was I found, because I'm working in miniature, which is, which is very fun, right? Creates a whole nother set of challenges for me because um, I'm not just working small in this in this space sorry i'm not just working big so i can't just find anything i can't find an apple and then put it there because it'd be huge so i wanted to find something relative to the size of my gallery and so i found a bead and then i had some um little flowers from a craft set that i hadn't used and then i found another bead and i had this plastic leaf because i was thinking about apples oftentimes they they'll do um, in in life drawing classes they'll they'll bring an apple out. And I thought that was funny. So I made my own little apple here with a red bead and a plastic leaf. And then I found some more of those leaves and then a green bead so that I would have um, something to compare, something a little bit different. So that's what I'm gonna work with. This is my still life, really, really basic. If you just had an apple or you just had a bead or you had a ball, your favorite toy, whatever it is, that's that's gonna be great. Um, I wanted to pick a few different objects so that we could challenge ourselves. Uh, but if you just find one thing, that's just fine. Okay, so let's start before we even mark up our page before we even get our pencil and start making some marks. Let's look at what we've assembled here. And let's think about the color gray. If we had a whole bunch of crayons, if we had like uh, the uh, a red crayon, or a red marker, we could just color in the apple or the flowers red. And if we had two different kinds of green, we could just color in the different color green leaves. And if we had yellow, we could just color the yellow bead or mini vase that I've got here and we're finished, right? What happens when we draw it in just in pencil? We don't have those colors anymore. And so we really have to think about what we're seeing here. We could just draw the outlines of all of these different shapes, but you'd let, you'd, you wouldn't be able to translate the information. The person looking at your outlines wouldn't know that this bead back here, the red bead was a different color than the front bead, the green bead. And so, once we're done translating all the shapes over, then we have to start thinking about how could we convert or how could we translate these different colors when we don't have color? So one way to do it is contrast, yeah. So before we get started, I'm going to quickly draw an outline of what I see here. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, this isn't a drawing for keeps. We're just gonna be trying things out. In fact, just to show you, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna draw two fast versions of this so that we can try different things on these two things. So you go ahead and you can draw what you can see uh, wherever you created your still life, or just quickly draw what you see here of my, of my little still life um, setup in the corner. There we go. So there's one. And I'm going to quickly draw uh, another one here, the same, so that we can try it again. You can just draw it once. You can draw it multiple times if you want. 
There are no rules. However you feel like drawing is up to you. There we go. Okay. So I've got two versions of the same drawing here, or sorry, of the same thing here. And so you can see by my outlines here yet, yeah, um, we can we can tell that, you know, there's the vase in the back, and there's the vase in the front, or the, the fruit shape, the fruit seed bead that I put in the front. And we can tell that because I layered the lines, right? I, I hid part of the, the yellow bead behind this one. I didn't draw all of it because the leaf covers it. What else do you notice? Well, this one, this leaf, right, was behind those other leaves. But this one, I just drew kind of off to the side. But it still looks like it's behind because of this line here, right? So part of the bead is hidden, which makes your brain go, oh, I see. So this leaf must be farther behind these pieces here. But this one, I didn't quite push it all the way over. And so this leaf is in front of it. So there's some dimension. It looks like this one's further behind. But really, that's the information that we're getting just by drawing these outlines here. Now what we want to do is we want to see if we can translate um, these different colors onto our page using just our pencil. Okay, well, what's the first thing that we can look at? Remember, however you want to start is up to you. For me, I to start by looking at light. Because if I was imagining that I was looking at this and it didn't have any color, I think that this right here, the, the, the light is, is white, right? I, I probably couldn't draw the different, um, the different places where there's, where there's a lot of light with just my pencil. So I'm going to, I'm going to start by looking where all the light is on, uh, on my still life. And I'm going to do an outline there. And so there's this like kind of shine right in the front of the bead here. So I'm going to make sure I don't color in that space there. Looks like there's a little bit of shine where I'm sitting on the bead here. Can you find any light or white spaces on, um, on what you're drawing? If you're not drawing what I already have here. It kind of looks like there's some white on these leaves here too. Like a little bit right there. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try not to color in those spaces, color in, uh, shade it in with my with my pencil, um, and leave that white so that the white of the paper does the work for me. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see if I can find the darkest spots. Right. And remember, con a way of uh, looking at contrast and practicing contrast is light and dark, right? Finding the light and the shadows. We've identified where the light is. Now I'm going to look for the shadow. And I see some shadow um, where the leaves kind of go into the bead, maybe inside the bead where the leaf goes in, uh, maybe a little bit where the flowers go in, and then maybe a little bit within the petals. And so those are the darkest. Oh, you know what? Also where the light comes down at the bead, can you see underneath the bead? There's like a dark shadow of where the circle, right, where the bead um, blocks the light from above from getting to the white underneath. And this is why it was cool that I, I could find this white piece of fabric. Uh, it's easier to see those dark shadows on a light surface. If you don't have that, that that's fine. But you could also try it by taking your, um, your little still life display outside and seeing what it looks like with the, the sun. You could take it to different places wherever you're making, um, where there are different life, light sources. If you had access to a flashlight, you could put the flashlight in different places and see if, again, you could change how the light hits your objects or how it ca casts shadow. Lots of ways you could try looking, um, looking at your, your setup um, by just playing around with the light. Okay, so I said I found a bit of darkness on the leaf. I guess right in the middle of the leaf and then behind where the bead was and those places I'm going to draw as dark as I can. 
I'm going to create some contrast between uh, the other colors so that the person looking at my drawing knows that it's the darkest. And I'm not being super careful, right? This is not a finished drawing. We're just kind of mapping out. We're, we're making little marks for ourselves to test how it'll look. Okay, this one I'm going to try. I'm going to do the. I'm going to do my shadow again, but this time I'm going to use the side of my pencil. I'm only going to use the flat of my pencil, just to see. What else could you try? Oh, I said I was going to do some of the petals too. So I'm going to bring a bit up here where the light didn't get into the petals. Same thing. Oh, I'm not gonna use the top. I'm gonna use just the, the tip of my pencil here. Make a really sharp dark. There we go. Okay, oh, I didn't do it over here. Okay. So now when I'm looking at this, I can see that these are the dark spots, right? These are the, where the shadows are. Oh, I think I wanted to have a little bit of shadow here too as well. There we go. Oh yeah. I've already got it there. So now I'm not going to do it to this one, but for this one, I've got light. I've got dark. What happens if I just color in the rest? All right. Oops. Had a little, <laughs> had a little accident there where some of my gallery collapsed. So I put my objects back together. <coughs> Excuse me, they're, they're in a similar, similar area, and that's okay. I'm going to keep going. So what I had just said was, um, so I've got my darkest and I've got my lightest spaces. What if I just colored in everything now? Would that be enough contrast for me to be able to tell the differences in the light and the dark and the colors? Let's give it a shot. And remember, I'm going to try and avoid the places that I had outlined where I wanted the light. I had those little triangles in the front there. That's where the light was. Then there was a the light on my leaf. I think I was missing a stem here. <laughs> I've got the stem over here, but not on that one. Not really trying to change my gray. I just want it all to be uniform, one color of gray. There we go. Okay. So can you see what I was talking about, about the darkest space here? So the shadows underneath and then the light space here and here and then the outline, right? So we can still tell it's three figures. We know there's a little bit of dimension that there's the shadow underneath, but why does it still look so flat? Well, I know that the reason it kind of looks flat is because it's all the same tone of gray. And so I can't actually tell that this bead is a different color from this one. If I was to look at this, I would just assume that um, if you told me that there was red in this, that all of these, this was red. So now we have to start considering color as far as how it would translate to gray. Do you think that yellow should be the same um, shade of gray as say red or green? In my mind, yellow should probably be the lightest. And even just looking at my bead, the yellow down at the bottom of the bead is a little bit darker than the yellow at the top of the bead where the light is hitting. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna add just a little bit more gray to the bottom of that bead. There you go. Right, so this, this activity requires a lot of looking. You gotta really look when we start to translate into gray because we want to create some contrast between each of these objects. So look, without even changing anything, if I was just to leave this leaf that color, I can tell that this is probably a different color than everything else here, and I'd be right. 
But now what I need to do is I need to figure out a way that I can show that this, the red in the flowers, are different again from the leaf. Well, I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a little bit more to the red. I think it's, I think the red needs to be darker than the yellow, but not as dark as the two greens. Not really getting into shadow and shading too much. Not really worried about going over and coloring over the lines. I just want to see if I can just using gray, I can create some differences between each of these, these shapes. So check it out. It helps also that these were separated, right? That these were apart. If I had put these both together, I probably would have to work harder. And you might have the same thing based on what you've set up. If you had a red object beside a yellow object, it might be harder for you. I might be able to keep these fairly close in color. They still look like they're different colors because they're far away. I'm going to go a little bit darker though. So I really want to show that it's different between the red of this bead. There we go. Okay. There's also red in my flowers up here. And so I'm going to look and everywhere where it's kind of a darker red, I'm going to try and make sure that I have matched the color to the, the shade of gray that I put here up in the flowers. Can show that these are not the same color as the yellow that is holding it. Do you see what's starting to happen? Are you noticing it in your drawing too? Right? It looks like they really are different, different objects. Okay, so those are my red. There we go. Okay. And now I have got two kinds of green. So now I've got to make this color different from this color and different again from this color and this color. And it's not easy. It might not, I might not be perfect. What I'm going to do is I think I'm going to make the green leaves the darkest of all the marks that I'm going to put here. And I'm going to, I'm going to outline my lines a little bit more. Because remember, the outline, it's, it's also part of... Um, Oh, this, this leaf is on top. The outline is also part of the contrast, right? The, 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 the thickness and what shade of gray you use for the leaf. If you go really, really dark um, on your outline or really thick on your outline, that's going to change the contrast of each of these shapes, right? So this object is in front, so I'm gonna make my lines a little bit bigger and darker here than the other objects. And I want to make sure that you can really tell a difference between those two lines. There we go. Okay, and then I said I wanted these leaves to be the darkest. But I still have to make sure that there's a difference between this leaf and this leaf. See how it's a lot of problem solving as I'm going along? And this is why we're, we're not trying to make a perfect drawing. We had to really think this through. So before you even start, um, a fancy drawing that you're going to do for keeps, doing these kind of sketches where you can start to problem solve and figure out all the things you can find and see in the thing that you're about to draw can be really, really helpful. And this is the place where you can try things out. And, and if it doesn't work, that's okay. You, you know not to do them when you go ahead and you make your final drawing. Okay, so I've decided that this leaf here in the front is going to be the darkest even darker than the leaf behind it. There we go. And you see how you can really tell that that light space now? I think I'm going to color that in just a little bit because it wasn't that that light on this leaf wasn't as bright as the light that I see on the bead in the front here. And so I'm going to again, I'm going to add a little bit of gray to this light here. So that it still is the difference between the leaf here and where the light hit it, but it's going to be different again from the light that was on the bead, right? Okay, so now what I have to do, and this one, this one's going to be hard. Now what I have to do is I have to make this bead be a different shade from these two colors, 
and from these two here. Let's see if I can do it. I'm not even looking at the details on the bead. If I looked really close at the bead, there's kind of like some marbling that's happening on this bead. I can see some dots on it. It does kind of look like a marble. Oh, I really like this bead. And then um, this one back here, the red one, it's it's got mm, it's got a little bit of marbling as well, but it's more up and down rather than kind of round um, on this bead here. And same thing with this one. This one feels like there's a little bit of um, texture on it running up and down, but it's different again because it's all yellows and all reds and all greens. So each thing, they have a couple of things in common, but I'm not even, I'm not even trying to translate that right now to my drawing. I'm just focused on the contrast and the color. All right, I think this has to be darker. not as dark as my leaf. You see how I keep going back and I keep drawing over in some of the spaces that I want to continue to add contrast to, right? And that's okay. You can keep going back. You could get your eraser. And if you think that you need to get rid of some of the, um, the graphite, some of the pencil that you've put down, you can do that. There we go. All right. And then one last one this leaf here. All right, and so can you see, I need to make sure that this leaf is a different color or a different gray than the apple that it's in, but I have to make sure that it looks like it's a different leaf than this leaf here. Because I can't color it exactly the same color because then you lose that this was behind it, right? So you gotta be thinking all the time. What happens if I color this line in? What if I don't color in this line? All right, there we go. So just using gray, I was able to show that these are all different different objects. I could even go back, I think with my eraser. How's this eraser? Ooh, that is an awful eraser. So I'm gonna get my good eraser. Where's my white eraser? There it is. And I'm gonna go back in here. I'm gonna get rid of some of the gray that I had in this one because I want it to be even more different than that red over there. There we go. Right, so it's colored in, but you can tell this is definitely not the same kind of bead as this one. And I said I, I had noticed some stipples or some, um, some lines in it. So there, I'm going to add a little bit of texture to it to show that, again, it's a little bit different. And then the shape of this, this apple as well. I'll add some pencil lines here just to show that there was kind of that shape there. And keep going. See what else you can figure out by adding just grays. Don't add a different color, but see if you can make it so that you can really tell the difference between all the materials that are in your drawing. I'm gonna try it one more time over here in this drawing, but I'm gonna turn my voice off while I do it. You do the same thing. Try and keep either keep drawing the one that you were doing or uh, try, try doing a duplicate and try some different techniques. Let's see what we can come up with.
There we go. So same picture, same objects, same material, right? Just using a pencil. I didn't even sharpen it in between. So still the same pencil. But this time I went with some darker lines, some faster lines, some softer lines. I put lines in different directions. Did you notice when I colored in the leaves, I went in kind of a circle shape. And so the, the pattern that I added changes and allows for contrast because the different patterns or different ways that I colored in each one of those, that's what tells me that they're different. That's what tells me that, they're, that there's contrast and that they're different objects. So just by changing the direction or how you color it in, how dark you make it, the, the, uh, the shade of gray, how you use your eraser, how you color your outlines, how you hide things behind each other can all help you to create dimension and show in a still life that each of these objects are different materials. Just like with all of our explorers, I'm gonna leave my camera running for a little bit so that we can clean up because that's always part of explorers is respect our space and clean up when we're all finished. Nothing is for keeps, so everything's gonna go back into the recycling bin. Thank you again so much for exploring with me this year. Um, I can't wait to explore with you together um, next year in 2021. If you missed any of our videos this year, you can go back and check out all of our videos on Facebook, YouTube, or artstarts.com slash explores dash online. If you have permission to share any of the things that you've made this year, even if you didn't make it in explores, we'd love to see all the things that you've been making and trying this year. All right. I hope to see you online soon and uh, have a great winter holiday. Bye for now.